City. Another family awaits my help, so let's take a look. Hi, Hi we're, we're the Claus family. family. I'm Lori, the mom. I'm Ken, the father. And we have two children. Our daughter is Kayla, age eight. <laughs> yes, you are! And our son, Brandon, who is age 11. Oh, you want to dance? I'm a stay-at-home mom. Okay, are you guys coming to dinner or not? Lock the door again. Okay, mom. I'm How many times have I told you not to lock the freaking door? And I'm a software engineer who works from home, which makes me very accessible to the family. Although Ken is physically here, he's not really as available as I think he thinks he is. Ken is so absorbed in his own work that I think he tunes out all the conflicts with the kids. <laughs> Shoes. As parents, I feel like we've lost the battle for Brandon and Kayla. This is not it's a place get your of joy. feet out of the bridge. No, you're 11 years old. And you're at age. Come Kayla. on, you're 11. Oh, why, why are you it's sitting? I really don't know how to deal with Kayla's sassy attitude. Kayla, I'm telling Will you, you shut up? I'm not going to shut up. Will you shut up. Don't even flip me off. Put that finger back where it belongs. Well, Such an ass. Oh God. This little girl with that amount of sass. Not in front of me. Okay, you're not gonna stand in a refrigerator. We're gonna... I would say the biggest issue with, with Brandon is anger management. Brandon, why don't you just act like a nice little boy? Come out. Nice little boy, my ass. I'm not a nice little boy. My take on homework in this family is homework is dreadful. You need to at least spend an hour on the project. No. I really want you to work on this without okay, television. Okay, wait. Can I watch a little bit of it and then do my homework? What time is this thing over at? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock at I night. Can I start at 10, I mean 9.15? All right, you have 15 minutes. I want you to look this over. When did homework become negotiable? I feel that I have given up so much of my own life to make a better life for our two children. I didn't have two parents for me when I grew up. I was the one to put myself through college. I was the one that got the Yeah, because it frustrates me because I'm trying to help you. Okay, I'll read. A few victims here. I feel like I have to be the ticking clock for everybody. You need to budget your time, come on. Tick tock, tick tock. I totally feel like I'm being taken advantage of. Ken and Kayla, dinner's ready. You guys, dinner. Okay, are you guys coming to dinner or not? Am I getting by myself again? Okay. I'm emotionally and physically drained to the point where I feel like I'm just gonna break down. This lady's carrying so much emotion. Super Nanny, please help us. We desperately need you. Mom and Dad, I've seen enough. Trust me, I'm on my way. Hello. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. I'm Laurie. Nice to meet you. Hi. When I met Joe for the first time, I was really nervous. This is my husband, Ken. Hi, Hi Joe. Pleased to meet you. you. Hi, Ken. Very well, thank you. Nice pleased to meet, to meet you. you. Oh, I liked her from the beginning. Please come so into the So, I'm house. here. Yay. Terrific. We've been waiting for this moment <laughs> yes, for a I long see. You're very, time. Yes, I see. Very, very excited. <laughs> the serious side of me being here is that there are issues that need to be really addressed. So. Today, what I am going to be doing is really taking an in-depth look at your family from the outside. Right. All right. I'd love to take a look around the house. As the kids were at school, I asked Mum to give me a tour around the house, but the tour around the house gave Mum an opportunity to air her complaints. This is our laundry area where I spend a lot of time doing laundry. This is the, the kitchen. I do 99% of the cooking. As a stay-home parent, I do take on a lot of the domestic roles. Brandon and Kayla both share a bedroom. Kayla is in a phase of her life where when she takes out whatever she wants to play with, she leaves it in this area until finally I just give up and I, I just clean it. So many times, I feel like I'm pretty much all alone carrying the weight. If I was an octopus and I could have eight hands, everything would be great. But truthfully, the house doesn't always look that tidy. Well, Mum's certainly got what I call the spit and polish syndrome. She's very happy to polish her crown and place it on her head and talk about how nobody does anything and it's all down to her. And what I think we should do now so that we're not late is uh, take a walk up to the school so that we can meet the kids and pick okay, up the kids. Okay, great. I would love to jump in and be able to help Lori out, but that her expectations seem to be all over the map and sometimes I just don't know how to help out. 
as we walked to the school, mum was telling me how the kids make her carry their bags and make her feel like a mule. And I kind of feel so like- who carries the backpack if she doesn't want to carry it? <laughs> Sorry? I always carry it. You carry it. And now sometimes I'll carry Brandon's if it's too heavy too. You know, I really don't mind helping them out if they need it, if the backpacks are too heavy, but I get frustrated where sometimes I have to carry too much. Hi, Kayla. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Brandon, pleased to meet you. I'm Joe, how are you doing? Good. You After we met the kids, we headed off home. Oh, gosh, these things are heavy. And sure enough, there was Mum lugging the bags. Oh. Why doesn't she just refuse to do it? We've got both of them. Both of them. I mean, watching her with these rucksacks and struggling with an umbrella, I mean, she could have toppled over, quite frankly. Once we returned from the school, the children's disrespect continued. You're not eating candy now. It's mine. I got it first swap. That's nice, but you're still not eating candy. It's my swap. It's irrelevant, Kayla. You're not it's eating... Swap. Kayla, listen to me. You're not eating sugar now, and that's I that. I'm just trying to take the ribbon off. Can you just leave me alone? Not right now. So that's quite typical, is it? To get the sassy mouth from All Kayla. The All the time. The way Kayla disrespects her mum is troubling enough, but then both kids decided to ignore mum when she wanted them to do their homework. Hello. Can you do a little homework? Just maybe mm -hmm. a little bit? Because like... o'clock. At 9 o'clock, why? What, it's it's 8.40. What is happening between now and 8 and 9 o'clock that you can't do homework? Rest. You always want rest. You're finding an excuse. Not. After watching these kids treat their mum like a doormat and negotiate at what time they were going to do their homework, I thought to myself, at what point is dad going to step in? But he didn't. If you only have five problems, we can just pound those out fast and you'll be off the hook. Brandon's in fifth grade and Kayla's in third grade. And at nine o'clock, these kids should be getting ready for bed, not doing their homework. You're having a test tomorrow. What is it that we're having the test on? All right, so hold on a minute. There's a test going on tomorrow. This yes. is the first time that you've seen any of the work, any of the... Yes. And it's... 9.30. 9.30 at night. Yes. I don't know how these kids get enough sleep because they're doing their homework far too late. And how can homework be a priority for these children when the parents don't make it a priority themselves? She wants you to read 30 pages of science? So wait a minute, she's expected to read? Page 58 through 83, that was tonight. 25 pages? Yeah, in addition to that, in addition to a big project due on Friday. So, so she's she be behind in her homework anyway? You're not? There should be more progress during this week towards getting it done, so it's not gonna be so the teacher's not actually being unreasonable? No, assuming that the child follows directions. The problem is, is... Why, why wouldn't a teacher assume that a child would take direction? Oh, well, our children don't follow directions. That's the problem. Uh, right. So who allowed it to happen? I guess it's our fault again. I think it's mad that these parents don't even know what assignments their kids are doing or what time it's due in, considering homework is where they have problems. So what time exactly will... Everybody go to bed tonight. <laughs> well, you know, tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, basically now it's stuff back in backpack. Put our nightie on, brush teeth, bed. So that's what, 11 o'clock? 11 o'clock. Are you kidding me? I made my way home. I told mum and dad, get a good night's sleep because tomorrow morning we're going to have a family meeting and it's going to be some straight talking going on here. What can we do to help you, Kayla, so we can get it done? Well, for now, let's just put Okay, it let's back just in. get I we, think everybody wants to go to bed. Oh yeah, I was ready to speak to mum and dad and I wasn't going to be holding back. I have a feeling at the parent meeting I'm going to have to hear some things that I may not want to hear. I am so nervous for this parent meeting because I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be criticized, and I'm scared for the truth. Let me start off with the first thing that I have noticed, okay? And the first thing I wanna talk about here is time management. Where is your daily routine? Right now, it's it's entirely all over the map. You just fly right by, you just get through another day. But who's gonna write that out, the kids? I mean, seriously. 
If you would just accept the time that you have and recognize the times that the kids are at school and what you have to do within that day and allocate sufficient amount of time, you would not be sitting here feeling like a failure because you can't function as a normal parent every day. It's not going to get done if you decide to sit down and do nothing about it, the pair of you. Yeah, you're right. None of you have defined your responsibilities and roles in the house. Let's talk about responsibilities here. Nobody has responsibilities. There are no chores here because you have no expectations because you're fearful that the kids are gonna kick off. Right. Which is madness, because now they're walking around like you're a pair of skivvies, the pair of you. Oh, you'll do everything for them, and you've created that. That's true. We have. You're right. Your children don't even carry their own bags from school. Seriously, Laurie, you look like a donkey yesterday. You were packing so much rucksacks and books and everything on your back, you could hardly walk. The weight of the rucksacks were tipping you over. And you're not teaching your children how to take care of their own belongings how to be responsible for the stuff that belongs to them. Because you're willing just to be a doormat. Let's talk about homework. They have never left the house at 11 o'clock at night to still see children doing homework. It was absolutely ridiculous. You blamed the school for a project that was set two weeks before. But we've been asking her every day to work on it and she won't, she refuses. So that, it's frustrating on our end where we do feel that we are on top of it and we you know, know that this is something you need to work on, not the day before. And she's like, I don't wanna do it. Are you kidding me? I don't wanna do my homework. Tough, at the table, we gotta do our homework. You need to encourage these children to have fun doing their homework. And you're not gonna do that if you're knackered yourself at 11 o'clock at night. You're tired, you wanna to go to bed. Mm. The attitude starts to seep out from the pair of you. You're not worried about it at all. It's actually not a priority. It asks you to look at yourselves. We gotta change some things. What? <laughs> and if you want my help, I ask you to work hard too because I expect that from the pair of you. I expect it. So are we ready to get started? I'm ready. You ready? All right, so let's get going then because there's lots to do. She needs to do what she needs to do. I know, but she's first. like getting dressed. Every time we need to go somewhere, every time we need to do something, it's always this <laughs> behavior. Was I seeing right? An eight-year-old throwing a fit like she's some four-year-old. This is ridiculous. Do you want to go Completely outside? ridiculous. <laughs> Parents allowing their eight-year-old daughter to hold control over them like a four-year-old. I was totally stunned. It takes one minute to put clothes on and you can have your toy back. Where do you want to get dressed? Yeah. Fine, then get dressed in here. Yeah. Here's your clothes. Brandon and I are leaving. Excuse me? What is going on here? Um, somebody doesn't want to get dressed. Somebody doesn't want to get dressed? Mm hmm So what's been happening? Temper tantrum. Yeah. Power struggle. Yeah. All right, so where are we now? Why is she in this room? Because she said she wants to get dressed in here. So what is she doing to you right now? Right now? It's stressing me out. When I walked into the bedroom and asked mum what was going on, she told me everything was fine now. Like, are you kidding me? What is going on here? So what do you need to do now? Make sure she gets stressed. So how are you going to change that? Get control. Yeah. How are you going to do that? I don't know. Well, I'm going to show you. This behaviour is unacceptable. Do you understand me? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
I want you to go straight back into your bedroom. I want you to put your clothes on. And when you've done that, I want you to go and see mummy. Do you understand me? Right, right now. Right now. I don't think Kayla has ever been spoken to very firmly. I think Kayla has been modicoddled with sweet, sweet sing-song voices, or she's been yelled at. I was clear and I showed her I meant business. And she got herself up from the bedroom and into her own and started to get herself dressed. What did I do? You raised your voice. Obs observe what I did. You want me to say? Mm -hmm. Kayla, get your clothes on right now and go get dressed. Mm -hmm. So how do you sound? If I'm more firm, then I'll be more authoritative. So why didn't you use her? Oh, I definitely back down when it comes to Kayla. Some ways I'm strong, but in many ways I'm very weak. Do you know why your toy was taken away from you today? Yes, you do know. You do know why your toy was taken away. I know you know. Was you listening and doing as you were told? No. No, exactly. Okay, let's get one thing clear here. You've been asked to do something. If your mum and dad tell you to get yourself dressed, then you must respect your parents and listen. Because if you don't, then there's going to be consequences for that. What do you need to do? Do it. Exactly. Was she happy? No. Did she cry? Yes. But did she do it? Yes. Uh, what, what are we doing here? What are, what are you doing? I walked past Kayla's bedroom to see mum apologising for the discipline that Kayla had just received. I mean, this mum has just undermined everything that we have just accomplished. You went in there because of what? Feeling guilty. And why did you feel guilty? Because I saw her sad. Listen to what is coming out of your mouth. You feel guilty because you've asked your eight-year-old to do what I successfully get three-year-olds to do. So do you think she's going to remain sad for the rest of the day? Do you think she's going to grow up hating you? Seriously, is that what you think? You want to sort this out, you better take it seriously with me because I've come in here 100% willing to help you and I want you on board. Aren't we here for your kids yes. to teach them? Yes. For you to feel empowered as a parent? Yes. Then allow me to do that. Okay. Laurie is absolutely petrified that she is not going to have a good relationship with her own daughter. And that is what's stopping her from disciplining her own daughter. It was truly an eye-opener to see the observation of other people, of how they see me. And I realised that mum feels so much guilt when she has to say no to her children. So I wanted to take her outside the house so she could release some of this emotional baggage so that she feels okay and not guilty about saying no to her children. We're about to take a walk. You've got a rucksack full of weight. You're going to be carrying that. What mum didn't realise was that the weight in the backpack is full of rocks that have words associated to the past that she needs to leave behind to be a better parent. Joe is pushing me to go up the hill and to go faster and she threw a rock at me. Here, carry this one. Here, carry this one. Do you want to keep going? Not really. Not really? Well, you better do another one. That didn't sound like a no. And I'm looking at this woman thinking, you need to find the courage to say no. Because if she can stand up to me and say no, then she's going to have the strength to be able to do that with her own kids. Smile. Okay, I'm smiling. But I don't feel very happy. I'm feeling this heavy backpack on my back. And I'm realizing this is my life every day. And I have to make a choice. Do you want to do it again? No. Do you want to know what's in your rucksack? Yeah, I do. Finally, she says no. And I'm like, thank God. She got it. Read them and lay them out. Lack of responsibility. Tone of voice, dormant mentality. There she starts to lay out what the rocks say, it hits her. She realizes that she has been holding on to issues. Holding on to all of this is dragging you down and it's dragging everybody else down. You can pick up these rocks and you can continue to carry them or you can shut them down there and make a choice to get rid of it forever so that you can move forward. And I don't want to carry all this weight anymore. I want to let it go. 
I have to make a choice to get rid of this weight. Lame. Disorganization. Too controlling. Needs acceptance. This is probably the most eye-opening experience of my life, getting out all that anger and frustration and emotion. I don't need to be a person carrying around so much negative weight. Maybe once in my life I can finally be free. Look at that. What you see? A rainbow. A rainbow. That rainbow must have come out for you. A new beginning. It's a sign. Seeing the rainbow was very symbolic for Mum because it showed her that the stormy clouds were clearing, just like the weight of her issues. And seeing that rainbow allowed her to realise that she would be able to receive sunshine and happiness into her life. Thank you. <laughs> Joe took the time in the rain to care, and no one has ever done that for me, ever in my life. So I will never forget this day as long as I live. Isn't your now my backpack's heavier than yours. <laughs> Sometimes I put rules into our household first, but having worked with Laurie and given her the time that she needed, I knew that I would return the next day and then put the rules in. So the next thing we need to do is to work on rules, on house rules. When Joe recommended we do house rules and we work together as a family, I think Brandon and Kayla were really surprised because we had never done anything like that before. So we're going to do this on the computer, all right? Okay. So let's take a look at that. There are no rules before Jojo came. The house rules are going to be for all of you because we've not been leading by a good example. Ultimately, it's going to be the parents in establishing what those house rules are. Does mum and dad swear? Sometimes. Sometimes we do. It will be good to set a good example here. With the rules in place, it's our job as the parents to follow through. There's four people who live here. It's house rules for all of us. I anticipate a lot of kicking, a lot of screaming, a lot of name calling. And again, if Ken and I are not consistent, this is not going to work. So this is good because what we've got this set up now as desktop. I think the challenge will be keeping ourselves to the new rules and not going back to screaming and yelling in the way things were before. So what we've got here are privilege removal strips. What I have for you all is a list of the things that we like to do. So take a look. Rules don't work unless you enforce them. So that's why when these kids misbehave, we're taking away their privileges. Movies, riding bikes, dance classes, handball, all sound familiar? These are the things that you love to do, and these are the things that you're allowed to do. However, we've got house rules up now, and if those house rules get broken, then what is going to happen is that the consequences for that are going to be you guys losing those privileges. And one of these strips will be taken off and placed into your personalised basket. Well, I think privilege removal for both Brandon and Kayla is going to be huge. We have never followed through with any type of discipline like that, ever. Quite simple, really. Don't break the rules, keep your privileges. I'm really scared about losing dance to class. I don't want to lose TV time. With a system of discipline in place, the next step is to pull Dad away from his computer that he works with at home so he can spend more quality time with Brandon. So, I'm glad that the two of you are sitting down here having a chat because it's important for us to continue to encourage Brandon to do the things that he is interested in doing. And it's also very important for you as the male role model in this house to be an inspiring father figure so that he's able to look up to you and know that you were there to support him in doing that. So today what we are going to do is we're going to jump into my taxi and take you to a gymnasium. Yeah. So we're we ready to go. I'm ready. Yeah, all right. You ready? Okay. Let's go. Perfect. That was a 10. Hi, leg up, leg up, stand up. That was better. It's important that Ken does activities with Brandon because it's going to allow them to connect, which 
in hindsight, is going to develop their relationship so they get on better. Good job. I could see it on his face that he was really glad that he had been affirmed as a person again and with things he enjoys doing. Yeah. Whoa. You know, it was great to see Ken doing something that Brandon absolutely loves doing. I mean, what better for a boy's self-esteem to really raise the bar and have his dad do something that he loves doing himself. You want to teach him, Brandon? Teach him how to do it. No, show me how I get up. First of all, my back. And what do you do? When the coach had Brandon step up and said, hey, why don't you show dad how to do it? That was great. I just, I, I love doing things at Brandon. What do I do? All right, I go backwards? Yeah. Yeah? Brandon's face lit up, and that's been very few and far between, but he was enjoying his dad listening to him. Hey, Good Dad, job. do it. He likes to challenge you, huh? Is that it? Did I do all right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brandon really loves the gym and I feel that Dad's learnt that he needs to put himself away from that computer every now and then and encourage Brandon to continue going. Brandon, do you have fun yeah. doing this today? Yeah. Huh? Yeah? How'd, how'd it make you feel? Good. Yeah? Would you like to come back here? Yeah. Good. I think we'll make that happen. What do you say? Okay, let's do it then. It was time for me to leave for a few days. Leaving mum and dad alone is going to be telling. But keep your eye on the bigger picture here, okay? Trust one another, work together, follow through, communicate, okay? This is about empowering your own family and that is a priority. Now I do know that Joe is gone for a few days and I'm scared that being Joe's not there, that the kids are gonna take advantage of the situation. With Joe's departure for a couple days, I'm anxious but excited. I am concerned that things might slip back into old bad habits. That's, I think, a little natural in starting a new process. But I think both Lori and I are determined to make it happen. Ah, big hug. All right, strength, 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 strength. <laughs> okay, okay? Strength, strength, strength. All right, Ken, Thank take you, care, you're welcome. This process has been extremely draining. I Brandon and Kayla are definitely going to test me, and it's going to be a lot of work on all of our parts. Enjoy, and I'll see you when I get back. Okay, thanks, Thank you, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. I've left the Claus family with a lot of homework to do, so I'm quite anxious to see if they've taken a step forward. So, let's take a look at this footage. How are you feeling? Nervous. Nervous. Okay, well, let's take a look. It's too heavy for me too. No, it's not. Yeah, well. Kayla, I don't want to carry it. You carry it. Go. Go. Control. Go. It's in control. Go. No, I'm going to be in control. That is not acceptable. And you know, now you lost a privilege. Okay. This is what I saw. I saw a woman that made up her mind that she will not be the cart horse donkey anymore and she was not going to carry the bags, okay? And you did really well there, okay? Then I saw a piece of lorry that went, oh, I don't know, I don't know, go back to how you normally are because this is all a bit too scary. And she started to go, you carry the bags. And she went like this to put your arm over to carry that. And you said, who's in control? Who's in control? You're really going, oh my God, who is in control here? I'm feeling like I'm not in control. I don't know what to do next. When that happens and you feel that, I want you to say to yourself, I'm in control. I am in control. Not who, I am. Okay? You stopped. And when you stopped, this is what happened. Because you know what? You know what? The house rules apply even outside the house. You're ripping my coat. You know what? I've had it. This is not your coat. And I didn't ask you to rip it. That's what she wants from you. Okay? When you sat down for a minute, what she was saying verbally to you, she realized weren't working. So now she had to get physical with you. Now we've stepped into the old behavior patterns. As soon as she hit you once, you should turn around with a low-toned voice and say to her, you do not hit me. 
That is your warning. Any more of that behavior and you will be losing a privilege. Get up and walk away. Don't allow yourself to be the punch bag. Okay? Okay, let's keep walking. I told you I'll come here. I've been very patient with you. You've taken advantage of me for so many years. Stop it. You lost serious privileges. Okay. What's going to be vital is that you continue to do what you're doing because then you will set the pathway of stability and normalcy for her and she'll recognize, well, this is how it is. This I'm very pleased with though, Laurie. Really? I thought I was going to get beaten up for that. Very, very pleased. Okay. Very pleased. Okay, good. Okay. Let's take a look at this next piece here. No, you don't get to watch TV, so you don't even get any ideas. Leave me alone. TV is part of free time. Maybe when you didn't lose a privilege. Now, if you keep up the good work today, then I will take the TV out Come of the on, You tomorrow. cannot take it away for the whole day. I can't? No, you can't. It's not fair. But get to watch TV. When do you think? Right now? Because it's free time? Yes. Let me talk to Dad. Oh, come on. Okay. What do you do there? You kind of undermine I, I, it. I, right? I, you I wouldn't you, say you, it. You undermine it. You gave, I you gave him myself. hope there was an opportunity it might go his way. Instead of just being firm and saying, no, the resolve is no television for today, period. It doesn't matter who we talk to. Yeah. No! It's 5.30 and Stop you're not it. done with your homework. Stop it! You were up till midnight now last night. Now you just a whole day! Ow! Sorry! Now you just wasted some perfectly time on it! Leave me alone! I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not strong enough. I'm not going to be able to do it because they won't respect me. It's only good if everybody participates, but they won't. They're winning the battle. There are two kids that are winning. So what's the point? So they may have won the battle, but you certainly haven't lost the war. I don't know why you were giving up at that moment. In the beginning, you have to toe the line, just like Joe was saying. I mean, you got to stick to what, what works. Even if it feels like things are coming unglued, you have to stick to what works. And that's these things. And not let them pull you in this rubber band, 10 direction thing anymore. So what we are going to do is to work really, really hard in stepping up what needs to be done here with regards to privileges, with regards to homework, making sure that we can keep positive about I am in control and making sure that we tweak anything throughout the time that I'm spending with you today on the fly as it's happening, okay? And together we'll keep doing it all. Okay? Great, all right, let's get going. I saw progress watching this DVD and I really wanna use that momentum to push this family forward in tackling the biggest issue they've got, homework. The other thing that I wanna show you all now is the homework base that I've set up in the laundry room, okay? Because we're gonna have a system in which we, we file homework and get it organized. Homework is a constant battle. Never gets done on time, always up late, everybody's tired. It has been the plague of our family. This is the new system for the homework, all right? Everybody listen, because this is crucial in bringing about a system that is going to make it completely easier than what it was before, all right? When you come in, from school, get out your homework, okay, and place your books on your trays. I think the homework station can be really exciting for Brandon and Kayla. I think it gives them ownership and control and independence to work in their space and feel proud and feel organized. You've each got a file here with your names on it. Within that, there are daily folders here. Okay, so you will be able to see when the homework is due. 
So if there's a paper that's due on Tuesday, but it's Monday, then it's their responsibility to file it on the Tuesday category. And it's our job, Ken and I, to write it on the chart that we know that there is a project that is going to be due on Tuesday and to make sure we stay on top of it with them. It's a practical aid of just creating some organization so that we're on top of it. We have the visual reminder with the school timetable. We have the files and then we have a place to put the books. So everything is in order. Backpacks, books, files, visual. That's good. The homework filing station is really a great idea for the kids. It gives them a place to organize their paperwork. I think it's really a, a great benefit. So look, listen guys, this is what I thought we would do. Let's get our homework done, and then why don't we go outside and have some fun? I certainly didn't want to leave this family until I was convinced that they could get through homework without their kids causing a fuss. So mum, good energy, high spirited, enthusiasm. All right, so that we can get the homework done, look through it, get it done, back where it belongs, and then we're gonna have some fun. Giving kids motivation for doing homework is crucial, especially if you have trouble. So, homework out, making sure that we have the sufficient tools, and then enthusiasm with it. Remember, he's going to go off and keep him focused. Right. So, let's focus on that. Creative things, remember the abstract Can I fix the peanuts? Can I look better? Yeah, they look great. I'm going to do that packet. All right. Keep focus on the one, one, month, yeah, one assignment at a time. To push kids through homework, you've got to be calm, you've got to be patient, and offer lots of encouragement. Right. Good stuff, right? You went on one with Joe? <laughs> so once the kids have completed their homework, we stepped outside and played some basketball. Girls against boys. Mom. Girls against boys. I know that the homework went very well today. Joe has had a huge impact on our house. I'm just gonna slam that, <laughs> slam that quick gun! The process with Joe of sitting through the homework, then having the reward of children being able to go out and have their free time, that was very valuable. And I think it was great for the kids to see the program really bearing the fruit. It's time for me to go home now. Wait now? Yeah. Homework went really well and so I knew it was time for me to leave the Claus family. Don't get me wrong, this family still have a lot of work to do. However, I do know that they've learned enough to continue the progress that they've been making. Cool, that's me. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. I'm seeing real change in my family. It's still gonna take work, but I see real life change. Thank you. Never know, I'll you touch the heart. This is a life-changing experience, and this is a new beginning, and that, that this is my life now. I don't want a big group hug from all of you. I think JoJo's really helped my mom. Bye, Joe. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Wow. That was amazing.